had a few setbacks today, including yours truly locking down all of his keys in one of the storage containers. Got to drill a lock out today. We got a late start, but we got the mule all squared away. What do you think of the mule, Jamie? Ah. I think lawns really do have more fun. <laughs> yeah, he's floating her along like he's on a cloud. Silent but dead. And uh, got all my tools and everything loaded up. We figured we'd just head out to my mom's, get the trailer hooked up to this thing, and uh, maybe bring him home. But if not, we'll bring him home tomorrow. He Yeah, he's a pig. I think I know better than that. I know he's a pig, but he ain't that much of a pig. Anyway, we're more than happy to feed the old mule for the work that he's doing for us today. Boy, he's running good. He's really happy to have this old guy back in service. Yeah, we'll keep him around, huh, Jamie? You just never know. A lot of people, some of the trips don't run. People might think a lot of them don't run. Yeah, then you bring him back into service, like the this guy. guy that can pull your well, he's outfitted for it. Got a 454, four wheel drive, granny low four speed, heavy oh. duty. What? And just for a future reference, there is no way in God's green earth that Gopher, my little Ford F 350, would ever pull a cargo container. I'm sorry. Yeah. It'd be catastrophic wouldn't want to do that to go for anyway. He's our we, he uh, he's our comfortable truck to take on long trips. And we don't want to overtax him, and that's one of the reasons, frankly, that we brought the mule back into service. We don't want to wear Jamie's truck out. It's a nice truck. It's not a it's not a piece of equipment. Yeah, it's useful and it helps us, but we don't want to. Use I like him for tearing up pastures. Yeah, yeah, she likes tearing up pastures with that. His tires like to slip, spin, sling mud. Right? Yeah. Alright. Over the river and through the woods, to my mom's house we go. To we'll be back. Carol's house. Yeah, yeah, my mom's awesome. You guys might get to meet her today. Yeah, another thing that slowed us up just a little bit today. Not just me locking the keys in the storage container, but uh, I had to do a little customizing to the old mule. Like a rock. <laughs> lead foot, yeah, but the only lead foot is Jamie. My legs didn't just become short, they've always been stones. Yeah, well, his uh, clutch pedal just became customized, but whatever it takes. Gotta adapt to the situation. Like yep. a rock. <laughs> We'll be back. Classic truck rescue. Well, the mule made it out to my mom's house fine. But, as often seems to be the case, I had an unpleasant surprise awaiting me when I got here. Really don't have anyone to blame but myself, but this is my this is my Alpha Sia fifth wheel trailer. It's been sitting in my mom's backyard for, I guess it's been sitting here about five years. Wow. Anyway, I used to keep up on it and do maintenance on it and life happened and I stopped paying attention to it and some limbs fell off of these trees and I got a little damage inside, but uh, it's not as bad as it was when I got it. It's not good, certainly. But, uh, and it's a mess in here because I just kind of been getting everything as dry as I can. And, uh, got a lot of work to do before I can just take this fifth wheel out to the property. Most of it's still in good shape, but this ain't cool. My slide out roof leaked. Fortunately, it didn't get everything the floor and the side walls or the back wall bad but it did affect the paneling on the top so I gotta pull all that out pull the insulation out dry it out and then I had another spot in the bedroom where uh, 
I don't have lights in the bedroom. I wonder why. Anyways, I got some work to do. But I'm going to do it. And uh, right now I'm going to clean it up because it's filthy. I've already been up on the roof. I check all the limbs off and uh, swept all the leaves and pine needles off. Um, but this thing's dirty. And we don't have running water out at the property yet, so I figured I'd be better off bringing the... Uh, it's not in that bad of shape. It just needs some attention. It is dirty, though. Look at that. Um, nothing I can't deal with, though. And uh, So I figured I'd bring the pressure washer over here and pressure wash it before I take it out there. And then uh, we'll address the problem area so you can see the difference, though. Where I pressure washed and where it's not pressure washed, it, it's a good looking fifth wheel when it's cleaned up. It's just it neglected and shame on me. Uh, but I'll snap it back into shape and we'll get it out to the property. I plan on being here a couple days. I did pack a bag, I'll be hanging out with my mom and dad for a little bit until this is ready to roll. Doing what we got to do. Peace out. Early in the morning at my mom's house. Mom's the one lady who will make you breakfast, whether you ask for it or not. Love my mom. And uh, I love her duck pond. <laughs> I get the privilege of cleaning her pool out once a year. And uh, this is why. <laughs> I built that deck for my mom. She always wanted a pool deck. I didn't know I was building it for some ducks. Hey, you guys got you guys got to go. <laughs> and uh, they think they own it too. Uh, yeah, I'll clean that up come spring. Anyway, uh, got the pressure washer all set up yesterday and started pressure washing, and you can see the difference it makes. Uh, Got the awning all cleaned up. Figured I'd clean the awning up, roll it up, secure it, and get this thing out of the backyard. I gotta take that little hunk of fence down right there, move that boat, and uh, pull it out onto the driveway before I get this grass too wet. <sighs> you guys can't just stay there. Well, maybe they can. Guess you're not really hurting anything. <laughs> I just don't care. Hey, you guys, are you tame ducks? Huh? I could really tick my mom off by going and getting some bread and feeding them. <laughs> you guys, all right? Huh? Anything I can get for you while you're lounging in there? <laughs> well, mom doesn't really care about the pool anymore. Yeah, it's all right. Anyway, going to work on the fifth wheel. Got a little better attitude. Took a closer look at it yesterday. It's in a lot better shape than I thought. Let's get it out of this backyard. <laughs> They just don't care. Yeah, not good. Not good. Don't want to let your RV get wet. Really don't have anyone to blame for this but myself, but uh, yeah, this isn't good. Working on day two of the just popping over to my mom's house and picking up my RV and and it's not yeah it's bad <laughs> I'll get a quick kid myself uh, just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there that floor is not flat um, had a lot of stuff ruined and uh, the bedroom was a little better than I thought it was going to be I've already got the slide out in there and everything stowed and ready for moving but um, this slide out and you you really can't see it but uh, it's it's not good 
it's just the ceilings sagging and had a lot of stuff run it that uh, I had stored here this has been sitting here for a couple of years and uh, I never really moved out of it because Jamie and I moved into our house at the old place and we just got everything organized when we found out we had to move again and so uh, good news is that storage locker right there is full of old uh, ads and dealer type stuff um, that I collected for 50 GMC trucks for a long time and all that was fine and there was a big stack of my drawings under that table that somehow stayed wet well probably because of the table it was a cool table probably going to be refinished um, but uh, could have been worse uh, don't let your RV get wet <laughs> that's the voice of experience talking to you and uh, I completely redid this whole slide out at one time um, right now I'm thinking I'm just gonna get it moved get it cleaned up and moved uh, already, like I said I already got the bedroom all done and that slide outs in I gotta get this slide out in I don't know how it's gonna work with it being all warped and everything but uh Right now I'm contemplating just ripping this slide out right off of it when we get it out to the place and uh, putting something else there. We'll see. Anyway, the main ceiling's good. Uh, it needs cleaned up. Uh, Could have been worse. You know, life just got in the way of me coming over here and checking on it and it doesn't take long and another good thing is all these motorcycles up here are, uh, things that I made by hand out of wire and so some of them are ceramic and they were up high so they're all in good shape and uh, some of them are pretty cool they've been in magazines and stuff but uh, I'll get this cleaned up get that slide out in and uh, get this thing out of the backyard I do clean up the slide outs before I put them in so I'm not just shoving a bunch of muck up in there but uh, I'll get it cleaned up and out of here we've had a couple of sunny days thankful for that thankful for the stuff that didn't get ruined this kind of bummed me out it's my uh, was an unopened 70 Buick Wildcat model I don't want to open the box yet but uh I don't know, I guess that would probably be okay. And That's a 70 Buick Wildcat assembly manual. Wrapped in plastic, I think it's okay. But, uh, yeah, so I'll finish getting her cleaned up. You can see the difference where I clean it and where it hasn't been cleaned. Where it hasn't been cleaned. Anyway. Get her cleaned up, get her out of here, move forward. Classic Truck Rescue. It is Tuesday the 9th, I think. We're out here in Tiger at Rick's mom's house. We're gonna bring our little abode to the property, Classic Truck Ranch. And um, we've been so busy for the last couple years that kind of neglected this little guy. and. Some of you know, Rick totally remodeled this Alpha a couple years, a few years back. And we're here because he wants to fix, Oregon is wet and we get rain. And there's been some rain damage and mold in here. And so he wants to repair it before we take it back. You might be but a redneck if. if <laughs> oh, this? Well, what you got going on there, Rick Iver? Well, I got to get this fifth wheel out of this backyard. And this, uh, the slide out's been nothing but a pain in my butt forever. And I can't get it out of the backyard because there's a tree right there on the other side of that window. Unless I get the slide out in, 
what's wrong with the... Well, the motor doesn't work. And, uh... And what? Why don't I just hand crank it in with the manual override? the same override? as I ever was, but I'm as good as I once, once was. Where does that go? Hey, as long as you got some of this and a pair of these. No, as long as you got what? one of those. And <laughs> one of those and a pair of those and one of the... Oh! Hey, I can see the light when I shine this on your ear. Sometimes I feel like it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You probably did the day I put off coming out here and put a tarp on this thing. That was the, probably the day that we went and dumb of me. did something else. Yeah, we do that, huh? Yeah, but your, but your home will be a love shack again, huh? It's a little... Well, I was telling Jamie today, you know, the way I get over an adverse situation, like coming back to you, this actually was my home for a while. And it was and very cozy and beautiful. It was. And, uh, and it will be. And I got the video to prove that, but due to negligence, uh, negligence on my own part, it has fallen into disrepair. And uh, so I'm thinking instead of rebuilding this slide out again, because the rest of the fifth wheel is in pretty good shape. It actually is. Um, I'm going to use this adverse situation to our advantage and expand upon our temporary home. But in order to do that, I got to get this from. We're, we're actually in a suburb right now. These probably people are probably freaking out because people don't do things in dark time. Yeah, but at least but, there's movements on the streets here. Like where yeah. we're where we live, there's nothing. Not even the little bugs move around at night. They the bugs play. move around at night. I haven't I seen hear one. Them. Anyway, this is about an eight wire job, because my come along, my mom, calls come alongs crawl alongs. <laughs> but the problem with this crawl along is that it's missing one of its hookies. See, oh. no hooky. I might add. That's why I stopped using it. Good. It smells freaking crazy in your mom's house right now. Like she's cooking up some kind of good stuff. My mom's always cooking up good stuff. My mom's, uh, my grandma came over on my mom's side, came over here through uh, Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty from uh, Italy. And my grandma was a cooking fool. I've and, heard stories. And a crazy lady. My battery's going dead and I don't care. Uh, but. My grandma was awesome, and she was a spitfire. She lived to be 92, but my mom came from her. And your mom is and awesome. my mom's awesome. And she's a spitfire. And she's, she's a She's a wonderful, wonderful lady. Oh, what? what was it you were just saying? Because I had a song for it, and it, as soon as it went in, it went out. Oh, my battery's dying and I don't care. My battery's dying and I, I don't, don't care. care. My battery's dying and I don't care. As long as I don't get pulled over and I got on dirty underwear. <laughs> this is uh, now an eight wire job. Eight strands of baling wire will get you out of a tight pitch any day of the year. Yeah, I guess right now you wouldn't want to bother knocking if the trailer's rocking because it might fall apart. It ain't gonna fall apart. That wire's gonna hold it together? Oh, that wire's gonna hold this crawl along together. Better than crazy glue? Remember yeah. the old crazy glue commercials where the dude yeah, sticks on a heart? Yeah, believes <laughs> so You good. can stick it to your heart hat and hang from a skyscraper. But I will tell you what, J.B. Weld will hold a crack in an exhaust a manifold. Story. I got some respect for J.B. Weld. And it will hold the neck on a radiator for a long time, too, before it blows. And baling wire. Mm -hmm. I got long respect for baling wire. And Gorilla Tape. But Jamie always steals my Gorilla Tape. But, Wait, hey. Fine. No. I, well, I, I bought yes. some. She's going to say I bought some. Do I buy you Gorilla Tape? Yeah. Here's how it works with Jamie. You meet her, you have Gorilla Tape. She uses it, absconds with it, and buys you a brand new roll. Well, yours was only like half full, and then so and you then, get a full roll out of it. Yeah, and except me. then you take that roll, <laughs> and then I still have no gorilla tape. 
I, True story. I ain't retracting the statement. You what? know what? I'll admit, I do heist your grill tape. You do? But you have to admit that I replace it. Yeah, but then you keep heisting it. I'd rather have my original roll of grill tape. For, he forgets where he puts stuff a lot, too. Oh, okay. But yeah, I admit. I'm, okay. But, I, you know, just like lighters, I, I anyway, buy them. I replace. So, in absence of a hook, bailing wire. I didn't take that hook either. Because, see, you can't even unspool this crawl along. I'm calling it a crawl along because we're in my mom's backyard and she calls these crawl alongs. My mom's cute. <laughs> anyway, so just want to get the slide out in. I'm going to attach the crawl along to this chain that's attached to a 2 by 4 going through the window. It goes all the way up and down the slide out and then one across the door frame. This thing's got to come out of this backyard. It don't belong here anymore. It's been here for a long time. It needs to go you might by. be a redneck if, as the if old saying using... goes, you can't you can take the boy out of the city, but you can't take the city out of the boy. Well, that's nonsense. You may be a redneck. Because all your city went bye-bye. <laughs> if you're using a bailing wire repaired come along, crawl along, come along, to haul your slide out in on your fifth wheel in your mama's backyard. <laughs> in your mama's backyard. <laughs> Up in here. I'm trying to be a little less. But you're being. Oh, no. I am what I am. Uh, ooh, resourceful, whoa. Well, we get a little more than that. Mm. Come on, little crawl along. <laughs> Is it held up by the barbed wire? It's held up by the faulty manufacturing. Right there. That's right. Oh. You know what? We'll just take a little bit at a time. See, this cheap crawl along is not giving me all of the cable. Is that the one I got? Then yeah. I'm entitled to. Actually, I think my mom bought this crawl along because she needed me to do something with it. That's kind of messed up. I hear ready water. That is so messed up. Thing. That's faulty manufacturing. I didn't notice that before. That's all right. Did that Ooh, come from uh, Harbor Freight? You'll have to ask her where she purchased her last crawl along. Um, I just need one more notch on the chain. I hear ratcheting. Somebody's back at it. Why? Because there's too much slack. Here. Oh. Oh, now the board's not gonna survive. See? I gotta go let the jack down. Day three. On uh, popping over to my mom's house and just hooking on to this boy. I'm sure glad I didn't ask Scott to come out here. Holy cow. That was a. Yeah. Well, I guess he would have just went home. <laughs> but uh, we didn't. It's Wednesday and we came out here Monday to get the fifth wheel. Uh, put about 14 to 16 hours of hard work into this thing yesterday. We've got it cleaned up a lot on the inside. and uh, But uh, I was kind of looking forward this morning. It, uh, it was midnight before I got the slide out on the other side in. And uh, I had to get real creative with that and use chains and a come along, a crawl along, and uh, all that because that thing got wet and swollen and I couldn't move it out of the backyard with the slide out out because of that tree right there and uh, But anyway, I got that all taken care of and 
was kind of looking forward to just taking down this piece of fence and uh, pulling it onto the terra firma over there so I could finish pressure washing it and uh, thought that's all I had to do today but then uh, I decided to inspect the tires that I couldn't see with the slide out out and uh, and it does need a wash too boy it's amazing what just a couple of years of sitting can do uh, I'll get her cleaned up but yeah checking out the tires noticed I needed a little air and then uh, notice that so yeah we'll get her up on the pavement and uh, get that off and go get another one the thing that bothers me is that the tire seems to match all the other tires wish me luck <laughs> Now yeah, we'll roll with it, you know. These things happen all the time, constantly. Yeah, got to clean it up. Well, we do need to get this out to the property, though, because that's uh, my priority list. So I'll go take that fence down. Hopefully get this pulled out onto the pavement and get to washing, get that tire off, get another one, move forward. All right, got the jacks down, got everything unhooked, um, took the fence down, well, the section that I needed to take down, and I think I'm actually ready to pull this out onto the pavement. But what I did is, this uh, yard, uh, matter of fact, this, uh, this whole block, this is the low spot <laughs> in this block, and all the water runs downhill, down the driveway, down the hills to here and uh, so yeah it's been a rough few days getting this thing ready to go um, and it's almost ready but I am thankful that uh, Monday and Tuesday we had sunshine and today we haven't had rain but uh, you know this ground still soaked so I took the precaution of bringing a bunch of old barn wood well it's not all old barn wood some of it is Anyway, I brought these boards, uh, long planks, that I'm going to lay down where my tires for the mule are going to go. And what I'll do is I'll just measure my wheelbase on the back there, and then measure what it is to the center on the hitch, and lay the boards out accordingly. Um, because once you get it hooked up, and if you slip, you're just going to make a mess, and I just soon give myself every advantage that I can have especially with the way things been going uh, and make sure I can get this out here and over there on the blacktop where I can wash it and that's why I didn't completely wash it where it is I did wash it, the awning so I could put it up I washed both of the slide outs so that I could put them in without putting a bunch of green muck in so all this stuff that you see on the outside of it uh, is not what the sides or top of the slide outs look like but anyway I'll get those boards laid out and uh, we'll give this a shot and uh, <laughs> things been back here for a long time I guess time just gets away from me but it's got to come out because I got a beautiful spot for this so despite all the little surprises and the, and the delays and the extra work I am thankful to God for keeping it dry so that I can get it out because trust me if it had rained at all um, we would not be pulling this out of here without making a big mess and I don't want to do that to my mom's yard despite all the things that happen and uh, the work that it needs it's still gonna be great and I'm gonna fix it and then make it just right for our little home but first I gotta get it to our home so I'll be back Almost got it out, Lou. I'll be right there. 
<laughs> Looking good, Rick. Yeah. Don't get your nose stung, little girl. Rick. Oh, that's cute, honey. <laughs> I got one, too. Anyway, progress. We're just taking a breather because that's done. <laughs> and I got the fence back up. Now I'm going to go out there and pressure wash that thing since it's on firm tarmac. And, uh, yeah, it tried to give me, give me some issues coming out of there, but uh, old mule did good. Old mule pulled it right out of there and uh, had a board break and got jammed up in there. I don't know if you guys saw it, but I got it out and uh, did some some cleanup here. Um, it's winter, so my mom's yard doesn't look like it normally does, but she usually has it fixed up real nice out here. And it's always been a cool place, so it's been real helpful while we've been getting this out. Let us do about a million loads of laundry <laughs> from the fifth wheel and uh, cook some awesome breakfasts and uh, just an awesome mom. And my dad's pretty cool too. They've been pretty nice. Yeah, got to show a little respect for the homestead. I grew up in this house and uh, also went to Boy Scouts in Troop 799, Tigered, Oregon. And they taught me that you leave a campsite in better condition than it was when you got there. So. We will do that, most definitely. Pretty cool campsite. Yeah, I got the offensive tire removed. Timmy's been breaking out my mom's driveway for getting all the pine needles out of here. But anyways, yeah, that is definitely not something we want to travel down the road with. So I'm going to throw that in the back of my car. Jamie's going to go down, get a good used tire put on there. And uh, I'm going to continue cleaning. I got the roof all cleaned. Got the other side of it clean. I just got to do that part of the front and this side. Classic Truck Rescue. Stop by the uh, Classic Truck Ranch to meet with the surveyor. Yeah. To uh, go up and down the property lines and kind of mark them and see what's what. Let me go catch up with him. He's out in the woods. All right. Out here with Tony today. Hi. I'm Tony Brooks with Ag Geospatial Northwest, a land surveying firm. Um, we're out here finding property corners. Uh, what we got here is kind of hard to see is an old rock that goes back to the early 1900s. And this is one of the, pro this is an angle point in the property line. Um, what I'm using is looking at is, I use survey grade GPS. Um, this gets us within about two centimeters accuracy. And, but part of the town, That's pretty accurate, Tony. <laughs> it's really accurate. It's a lot of money, too. Yeah, I bet. That's about 20, 20 grand right there. Yeah, make to, keep me away from that thing. <laughs> yeah, i got to pay for a subscription service. So, anyhow, I got that, but I need to see the sky and I need clearance. So, what we're looking at is trying to cut back a few of the tree overhang branches here so that I can get the sky and get the satellites and try to get an accurate survey point of this point here. And then we got the next point out towards the road, the front of the property. We surveyed that. Once we have those two, then we can start staking line between them. And then we're going to next go towards the river, which long ago there was a monument set out there, and we're going to see if it still exists or not. So that's the gist of what we're after right now. All right, and Tony was getting ready to get busy with his pruners, uh, cleared something out over here, and I told him, leave all that grunt work to me, and uh, let's get Tony and his very high-tech equipment to work showing me what's ours and what's not ours and I'll come back and clear that he's not listening to me he probably well I'm gonna take a look <laughs> and see if we can make a difference okay so can you do me a favor and maybe hold 
Shut the camera off and get to work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is high tech. He's in touch with what? What'd you say? Like nine satellites, Tony? 14 satellites. We're out here on the island where Jamie and I were out with a machete not knowing what was ours and wasn't but I know she really loves this big huge rock right here. It's kind of cool looking on the other side and uh, I go I told Tony I said I hope that rocks on our property and he whipped out one of his little things and said yep so there you go baby it's your rock. I might use that for a property marker. There's the river right there and this is where the stream ties in with the river right here and there's the dike that the Army Corps of Engineers made and the property goes over there but Tony's gonna come back in summer when we can get over there easy holy cow that looks really shallow I don't know doesn't look that deep to me probably only be decent of me to check it out first don't want to lose my surveyor. <laughs> I, mean, I, I wish I had a pokey stick. Tony's been giving me a lot of good tips on how to clear my lines, my property lines, and properly mark them, and uh, eliminate a lot of confusion. That's why he's out here, and we sure appreciate it. This old map's kind of cool. Okay. So in 1987, this survey was completed. Um, the guy noted that the corner was up here which would be kind of in this general area probably right in here and then he noted that he couldn't set this for some reason so he went back 18.41 feet which is basically where my instrument is and he set what he calls a witness corner so it's on the line going back that way and this must have been underwater or something more in 1987. It, we've seen this underwater since we've been here. Well, the the streams changed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so you doing the survey in August, so it shouldn't have been that much. The survey yeah. was filed in August, late August. So he probably did the survey in the summer months. So it was probably this or lower. I mean, I guess it depends on how we, what time of year he was out doing it, so... Yeah, it changes out here uh, day to day, we found. Yeah. So, do you think that big rock might be on the property line? Or is the property line to the right of that? Uh, oh, okay. Come, come stand here. Because I think this is where we piled rocks, yeah. where I was close. So if you stand behind it... And you look that way through my instrument, so I see a rock there with moss on it. Yes. That one is probably close to line. So I'm thinking it runs up through there. Okay. You have to look at it. So Jamie didn't get a rock. <laughs> uh, the big rock she wanted was over there with oh, the stump. Okay. That we walked by. All right. Good deal. Yeah. yeah. That might be a property marker. Yeah. It's no? just, uh, I think it's just a rock in the river here. All right. Well, if it's on the line, it's going to become a property marker. <laughs> At least I'll know where to get my bearings. Well, we got the western side done. Now we're out on the eastern side. This is the first time I've ever been out here. But we're all the way up to the road on that side. And this is kind of the island across from where the temporary home site's going to be. Working our way back to the river. Back there somewhere.
Tony's been a big help out here today. Big help. This was, he liked my little idea I had right here of putting the fluorescent orange duct tape on the white posts. And when I bought the posts, I asked them if they could cut them in half for me and I had them cut them. At so, uh, here we are. Hopefully we can hook and roll. His tires aired up. Pressure wash the mule. I thought I'd surprise his mom and dad the other day. Swept all the pine needles out of their driveway for him. All that. Sometimes you gotta do nice things for nice people that always do stuff for you. And I love Ricky's mom, Carol, is awesome. And his dad, Lou, is pretty cool, too. The other day we learned we needed to buy a new tire. He's got the whole boy all cleaned up. And Job of uh, how committed we are to bringing the mule back into service. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of these around the ranch now. Got number 17s on them. Legal beagles. Well, the mule did really good coming over here. And uh, with the amount of work we put into getting you might, them back in service. You might be a redneck. You might be a redneck. If you fill your radiator with a five gallon bucket, but let's, let's do this. <laughs> Four, oh, ooh. 454. This is it. All right, if you could go up in the street, honey, and just nod your head yes when I start going to let me know nobody's coming either way. Well, we're moving on out to the top to a deluxe shipping container and a ranch <laughs> yeah we're moving on up well this will probably be the hardest part of the journey right here yeah. instead of lucy and desi in the long trailer it's jamie and ricky in the long how many trailer. rocks you got in there jamie hey i won't tell hey uh, i just wanted to ask some people so what what's how you doing today i'm having a bad hair day <laughs> one of my viewers sent Jamie that hat it was an anonymous little package that just said Jamie classic truck rescue and it just so happened today look I am. But it was pouring today so she's excused yeah but who did that do I make comments about my hair I think it was a nice thing honey. Could, oh no it could be an <laughs> involuntary thing that I do but uh, so I'm wearing it yeah Thank you much whoever she's sent sporting me it proud whoever sent jamie the bad hair day i had, had two <laughs> comments on it already at the market yeah <laughs> i'm not going to tell you how many rocks i have in that thing yet sounds a lot better huh I can't, what no i'm kidding <laughs> Goodness. Is that how fast we got to drive all the way home? <laughs> yeah. This is National Lampoon movie. <laughs> Honey, you got the kids all bundled up, packed up, and ready to go? 
Yeah, I brought the pressure washer too. <laughs> Is that thing gonna fly off? What thing? That side thing. This thing right here? Yeah. No, because I've got this, uh, I've got heavy duty uh, custom titanium BS going on here to make sure that doesn't happen. It's just missing a rivet right there, honey. That's all. R I C K E Y. Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. <laughs> Did you? I know. But you're not a mouse. Uh, well, you know, you know. Chilled the whole thing. I did. Uh, I almost it, need panoramic. I put a lot of work <laughs> into cleaning this puppy up from the nightmare that we rolled into. We, I it's know. it's Friday today. We came out here Monday to hook up to the fifth wheel and take it home. Uh, it didn't work that way. And then yesterday, I had the surveyors out, and uh, boy, we had a good day today. We stopped by the property, and I had to make a phone call to one of my neighbors because they had built a small structure on part of our property. Not, not intentionally. Uh, they were given a, an incorrect survey by uh, older equipment, but the guy we had out, I mean, he was talking to 14 satellites and had a $20,000 stick with a look like a R2-D2 on, robot on top of it. I gotta sneeze. Go ahead. <laughs> I can't. You just messed it up. Anyway, sorry. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so uh, we were kind of a little concerned about that because it, you don't want to call your neighbors up and say, hey, you got a structure. And it's just a little horse barn, uh, like a lean-to that's on our property. But it's not really a part of the property we we're planning on using. So I offered as a compromise, hey, how about you just leave all your stuff just like it is. We'll make an agreement saying we agree to the, the property line being what it truly is. But you guys go ahead and continue to use the part you're using. And can we borrow this little part in the back of the property that you're not using? And they were like, heck yeah, how about it? And everybody shook hands and everybody was smiling. And it just it felt good to get off to on the right footing with our neighbors. Oh, and then Jamie found out. Jet's written, written an apartment. <laughs> no, but the, our neighbors that that uh, such a small world. I moved to Oregon from Kingman, Arizona, and uh, she's from Kingman, Arizona. So we knew some of the same people. And That is a little tight right there. Uh, I'm gonna go put this truck and loose truck away real quick. All right, I'm gonna go blow my nose because I think I'm you getting... Know where that stuff is. All right, yeah. anyway, getting ready finally to hit the road and get our home out at our home and uh, it stopped raining and let's get it done. Thank you, God. Yeah, thank you, Lord. I love you. Love you too, hon. Star date log, February 12th. Alpha. The home is home. Where's that? At the Classic Truck Ranch. I know, I can't see you, but um, I'm going to still try to get in front of you. All right. Here we go. We got our home home. a nice sight right there. Glad to finally have a home on the range. It's a start. For me, land spreading out so far and wide. Forget Manhattan, give me that countryside. <laughs> Tell you a little story about a man named Rick, a poor mountaineer, barely kept his plan fed. Then one day he was looking for some land, and up from the ground come Classic Rock Ranch. <laughs> 